The communications industry has a history of being confused by 5G. Back in 2009, carriers initially tried to deploy it the same way as 4G, as a bandwidth booster. And when that didn't work, they went into a big sulk. Well, now we're entering a new cycle of confusion focused on private 5G networks. And it's being driven by, well, everyone. Carriers, vendors, and analysts are all contributing to the bewilderment, if you will. Huh? On the analyst front, Omnia, Deloitte, and Gartner all released reports and forecasts this year that have prompted industry puzzlement and, well, hilarity. <laughs> Gartner's analysis appeared to have been delivered by Clown Car. Its magic quadrant muddled 4G with 5G tech and conflated manufacturers, service providers, and systems integrators. Gartner also completely left out Huawei and Samsung, who together dominate about a third of the global market, rendering their entire effort essentially pointless. Then there's Omdia. It ranked Samsung, which has a pretty good reputation in private 5G and about 5% of the market, dead last among nine vendors and behind three startups, which together have less than a quarter of a percent of the combined market share. Trying to get clarity on this situation was a big waste of time. Apparently only one of their 300,000 employees, someone called Simon, was qualified to talk to me. And Simon says he's just too busy weird. To highlight how badly the analysts misunderstood the private 5G assignment this year, I created my own industry analyst tool. I called it Steve's Mystic Quadrangle, with carefully chosen axes and criteria. At the same time as the analysts were tripping over their floppy clown shoes, carriers like AT&T, Vodafone and Orange have further muddied the waters by calling network slicing over public networks, private 5G, or dedicated 5G. But to be truly private, networks must have fully isolated RAN and core, plus dedicated spectrum. Carriers have a long history of stretching 5G definitions to sell more services, and it's actually pretty disappointing to see that they're at it again. All of this makes the job of evaluating private 5G harder for organizations that are considering it. They'll get there in the end, but this sort of nonsense really doesn't help.